Well, hello again, and welcome to my next project. As some of you may know, I've just finished making my electric furnace, and one of the reasons I made that electric furnace, or heat treating oven, was that I'm very keen to try my hand at making something called Makume Gane. If you're not familiar with Makume Gane, it's a beautiful uh, um, Japanese technique to forge weld non-ferrous metals. So it's often used in conjunction, for example, with gold, with silver, with platinum, with copper, with brass, with bronze. And it's the same process as steel pattern welding in the sense that you have many different layers, which all have different properties, that are then heat welded together, not using a welder, using just heat, and eventually ending up with a very beautiful pattern, which you can then make into jewelry, or in my case, I want to make some knife guards, potentially some pommels and various things like that, maybe a bit of jewelry. Anyway, the process is very complicated and very precise. And the first thing one has to do is cut strips of metal very evenly, very carefully to make the billet. So that's where we're going to start. So as I said, the first issue is to cut the small pieces of metal um, to make the billet. Now, I have got a really good scroll saw, a Hegna, which I was very lucky to get a few years ago. But I thought actually a guillotine would be even better and quicker. So I called up my mate Dave, who runs a fantastic salvage yard not far from here, from whom I bought a lot of really good things, and said, Dave, do you have a guillotine? And he said, yes, but I'm not selling it to you, but you can borrow it. Um, but I don't know if it'll be big enough for you. I said, OK, let's check it out. So he lent me this. I don't know what Dave thought I was going to be doing with, uh, with the guillotine, apart from maybe rebuilding the Queen Mary. But I said, yes, Dave, that will be amply big enough. Um, I just put the drill there to give it a sense of scale. It's a fantastic piece of kit. It's in quite rough condition. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, and also as a favour to Dave, is I'm going to restore not the whole thing, but at least the blades. And if you would like me to... really is I've uh, repolished the blades and uh, hopefully made them burless and clean. This is a piece of mild steel that is, it's one mil thick steel and I forgot to show the result before where it just chewed stuff up. So let's have a look now. It's not mounted to the bench but as you can see That is now a fairly clean cut. Um, so that should be good on brass. Anyway, we're going to find out. So this brass is fifty one point five millimeter thick. bit. I folded over the last bit. I have 0.5 mil copper. And I'm going to try a slightly different technique. Thank you. 
well that was a lot straighter obviously it takes a little bit of practice using these things I've never used one before um, but I don't know if you can see but that's a pretty clean cut quite a, kind of pleased with that <clears throat> I'm finally going to use my beautiful new scriber um, it's made by someone who's become a very good friend Dimitris Polychronos who runs a great YouTube channel called Jimmy's Canal. He's the most magnificent uh, fabricator, uh, jeweler by, by training, and everything he makes is, is just so beautiful. And he, this scribe is so beautiful that I, uh, Dimitris and I agreed that I would save it for a special uh, project. And since Mukumi Gane is his inspiration, I think this is the ultimate time to start using the scriber. So now I'm going to, these strips are 30 millimeters wide, so I'm going to make squares that are 30 millimeters. Okay, so I'm going to have 10 strips of copper, 10 strips of brass in the billet. Okay, so here's the birth of my billet. Now some of these pieces are not quite right, but I think they'll be close enough. Now you see these lamination seal, although I haven't even done anything yet, are going to cause a problem. And from everything I've read, they will not uh, weld properly and generally the problem is there's still a burr and there is I can feel it there's still a burr around the um, the pieces so now I have to go through the incredibly tedious process although I believe it'll be worthwhile in the end um, to um, file every single one of these burrs and Make sure the surfaces are nice and clean. And then we'll
so I realized that one of the things I've got to do is I've got to make the press um, to keep the billet flat while it's um, cooking. And I was really lucky in my scrap bin, I found this, these, these pieces of one and a half um, centimeter or 15 mil steel plate. Um, I can't even remember where I got it, but it was a godsend. And I'm cutting them eight by eight. Um, and the reason for making it so big, and I don't know if I'm making a mistake, and I'll tell you what my worry is. My worry is that all the literature says you have to have very solid plates and they've got to be bolted down. So I'm going to, I'm going to um, drill through and uh, bolt it together. But together, that's 30 mil, that's over an inch of steel. And I'm slightly worried that that is going to absorb so much heat that it's going to make it very difficult for me to judge the temperature correctly. But the advantage is, if I made it thinner, I could clamp it here, clamp it there, and have the piece in the middle like this, and I would it would go flat like that. But my worry is that actually it would be uneven, and there would be just a bit less pressure in the middle. So what I want to do is to bolt here, bolt here, bolt here, and bolt here. That's the thinking. You know, this is all an experiment, so I'm now going to saw this bit and then start drilling. So that's all drilled and fits. So let's have a little test fitting. So this is the concept. These will be eventually cleaned to within an inch of their life or a millimeter of their life. is really tight here and when I actually come to fire it I'm going to put another nut here just to secure and make sure nothing moves. So that's the concept. So here I have assembled the things that I need um, to make a really clean Mukumigami billet. I'm pleased with the squares I made, the, the, the edges are clean, uh, there are no burrs whatsoever. Um, and what I'm going to do now is wash them very, very carefully. 
One of the things I'm going to use is instead of pumice powder, which I haven't got, is each piece is going to get rubbed with this fiberglass brush, which is going to be tedious as all hell. And that's going to be done in a bucket of distilled water, with, which is here, and a tiny bit of detergent and afterwards some scotch bright. It will then be dis uh, rinsed in another bath of distilled water. And actually before I, yes, it will do that. And then to ultimately degrease it, this is not, this is something I've come up with myself, so I have no idea if it's gonna work, is I'm gonna use some um, dry cleaning solvent. I'm gonna try and perchloroethylene, which is a dry cleaning uh, solvent. It's horrible stuff, it's dangerous, don't mess with it. I'm going to put some in this bowl. I'm going to put the pieces in there to make sure they're 100% degreased and also it's going to really help them dry. Um, <coughs> from the moment they have left this wash, I'm going to be wearing these gloves. And then one by one, I'm going to dry them with a hairdryer on cold, not on hot. Just blow the water off. By then, after they've been through all this, they should dry very, very quickly. And then I'm going to place them one by one on the press. The only thing I've got missing at this point uh, in the press for the press is some ferrous oxide or some scale limiter to uh, not infect the billet from the steel. What I have done, however, is I have polished um, the plates here, the inside of the plates, to about 400 grit. So they should be pretty clean. I've also cleaned them with the per chloriothylene. <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. Anyway, <clears throat> that's where I'm right now. So I'm going to start getting on with it. And by the way, I've washed my hands extremely carefully, by the way. Do you know what? If I'm using the scratch bright, I feel I'm not going to have to use the fiberglass which is really great news because that would have been a real drag. I have to make sure that it's all super clean. This is the last stage of the cleaning process. Well, I'm going to put some of the uh, dry cleaning fluid in here. And this is really to try and get rid of the last of the grease. Now the reason I'm using this stuff is it's a throwback to um, when I was learning to, uh, or trying to learn to make clocks and watches and things. And a lot of watchmakers use um, dry cleaning fluid as a degreaser. Um, it's very, very effective. And of course, what I'm hoping the other advantage is to, because it's so incredibly, um, uh, what's the word? It evaporates so quickly that hopefully it'll give me an extremely nice dry uh, billet at the end of it. So I'm really sorry, I, I, my battery died um, without my knowledge while I was filming this and I don't know where it died so I'll just repeat a few of the things in case I decided not to use uh, the hairdryer because it was irritating and not as effective I felt as this lint free cloth which has come straight out of a sealed pack um, which seems to be far more effective and certainly far quicker 
So I'm alternating the stack, as you can imagine. Brass, copper, brass, copper. Well, that's a little burr. Let's turn the oven on. So I'm going to set it. It's supposed to be at 815 degrees, but I do not trust this oven. And it's been out by 100. So I'm going to set it to 900. And 15 degrees. And there's the billet in the oven. Let's hope, eh? So I want to be very clear about something. Um, this is an experiment. I've never done this before. I am trying to achieve something um, by various stages. I fully expect this billet not to work, but from that I want to learn what I may have done wrong. So at the moment the uh, oven is at 750, um, nearly 760 degrees centigrade, and I'm going to check it at 815 because who knows? And what I'm looking for in the billet is a kind of, it looks melted, but it's not melted. It's a kind of bubbling. It's, it's a very strange state. 
and that's what we're looking for so I'm gonna check it at 815 which we're not that far off probably 10 minutes away and then if there's nothing happening I'm gonna let it go up to 915 let it soak for a while and see what happens thank you I think we may have a bit of uh, melting. Um, Alright, I have no idea what this is going to give. Okay, I really don't. This is uh, totally my first time doing this. Okay, so what we have here is I think we have a weld. There's a piece of brass here that's welded to the copper. But the problem is that it's welded to the steel plate. So obviously, coating the steel plates is absolutely crucial. Um, and I was a bit loose with that. But I'll tell you something, I think we've got Makumigani. So my first billet was a, was a disaster in many ways, but I don't know if you can see properly, I don't know, it's very difficult to film this, whether you can see the copper as well as the brass. Obviously the billet did get stuck to the plate and therefore it was a disaster in that sense um, but it means that I did get a weld and once I managed to um, coat the, the the plates properly we should have a result here sorry it's very hard to focus especially when you're as blind as a bat like I am let's see yeah. 